25 years ago, these passengers were about to do what no paying airline passengers had done before. Take off on a flight from the new Denver International Airport. Oh, far, far away from the Denver metro area. And it was a cold, snowy morning at DIA. When on Tuesday, February 28, 1995, the airport opened its doors and its runways to passengers for the very first time. And welcome to this special edition of Politics Unplugged. I'm Ann Trujillo. Denver International Airport's been Denver's home for aviation for a quarter of a century now, and it has made quite a name for itself. Both the Wall Street Journal and Skytrax World Airport Awards recently named DIA the nation's top airport. Now, those of you who were here in the 1990s, you may remember the airport did not open as smoothly or as quickly as hoped. So here's a refresher for you from former Denver 7 reporter Paul Reinertsen. Stapleton International, a pretty nice airport. Well, it's convenient. Everything is it's just right here. Personally, I don't know why they're even closing it. In the 1910s, it was widely believed that planes couldn't even get off the ground in Denver's altitude and they'd never be able to clear the mountains. But Denver Mayor Ben Stapleton was determined this city would be a part of aviation. In 1929, the city opened its state-of-the-art municipal airport, a hangar big enough for the biggest airship anyone could imagine. A 747 wouldn't even be able to get its nose inside the front door. Ben Stapleton had no idea his airport would become the fifth busiest in the nation. No matter what the city did, the airport never seemed big enough. Bad weather and inadequate runways were always causing delays. I'll probably miss my flight in Chicago. Now, if we had a new airport, we wouldn't have to be standing here waiting for the plane to arrive. Decades of efforts to expand onto the Rocky Mountain Arsenal failed. In the late 1970s, a frustrated mayor, Bill McNichols, began looking for new airport sites. See, a year ahead of schedule. When Federico Pena was running for mayor in 1983, he pledged to go ahead and expand onto the arsenal. But environmental concerns, Adams County threats to annex the arsenal, and Park Hill residents demanding the airport be moved, Mayor Pena began imagining a new airport. An airport larger than the city itself. Many will continue to argue that it's too far from town, too expensive, too many frills, too big. But all the same criticisms were leveled at Stapleton 50 years ago. So ground was broken in September 1989, and Pena promised a new airport by October of 93. You'd be surprised at how many people, Mr. Mayor, that I've met around the country who have spent the night at Stapleton. When Wellington Webb took over the reins from Pena, he pledged to keep that October 93 date. Boys, I'm telling you, you've just made part of aviation history. First 767 landing at Denver International Airport. Plans could land the summer of 93, but an October 31st opening had already been tossed out. Moving cargo to the south end of the airport and airport design changes killed that idea. More than a half million people showed up for a September 24th air show. Advised against it, Mayor Webb at that time was still pushing for December 19th. Porta potties set ablaze by workers were clues the mayor might be pushing too hard. But push, he did. Hopefully the weather's nice, it'd be a nice day like this. Plans were made for the largest peacetime move of equipment in U.S. history. By late October, nagging electrical problems and lagging construction schedules forced the mayor to accept the obvious. He told city council, the airport would now open March 9th. With the pressure off, a gala dedication in November. Tours for everyone. Antelope chased away in December. Moving out of Stapleton in February. And then... A crushed bag had little to do with real problems with the baggage system, but it became a symbol. Jams and software problems forced another announcement. May 15th. Ah! An open house in April to soften the blow. Hopes were high in late April. A big bang baggage test would show DIA was ready to go. Like a cork on a stream. Whatever happens, happens. Unfortunately, it demonstrated it wasn't ready to go. The opening of Denver International Airport will be delayed. Nine months of squabbling, lawsuits, investigations. United takes over that automated baggage system. The city builds an alternate system for everybody else. A month ago, the bag systems got the mayor's blessing. 
And so, come Tuesday, ready or not, here we go. And so what happened, and Denver Mayor Wellington Webb ultimately, ultimately made the call to open the airport and joins us today to take a look back and forward. What are you thinking when you look at those pictures? There were some headaches, right? Headaches, it was very <laughs> painful. <laughs> it's easier looking at it now than it was looking at it back then. It, uh, but the good news is that uh, we opened. Uh, three aircraft landed simultaneously uh, on Fe February 28, 1995 two aircraft from United and one from Continental, and it demonstrated what the airport was built for. It was to expand uh, aviation travel in the United States, and it, we, longer, we no longer would be the bottleneck for aircraft on the East Coast and West Coast, uh, because we only had one runway at Stapleton that hmm. uh, operated when we had bad weather. Uh, so I think that, you know, initially when it started snowing, I asked God why he was doing this to me, or she. <laughs> Uh, but uh, graciously, uh, and it was appropriate to have uh, two of the aircraft being united because they were our lar largest hub. At that time, I know they had 67% of the air traffic, and Continental was much smaller. So it opened, and uh, it's doing a fabulous job. And that was a big decision to have the airport so far out there. People today still say it is so far out well, there, but it's explain not, that. It's not far. If you look at... Uh, if you land at Dulles, people said Dulles was too far from downtown Washington. If you go to Dallas-Fort Worth, they say Dallas-Fort Worth is too uh, far from, from uh, downtown Dallas. But it expanded the land area of Denver by a third. I think that uh, Mayor Pena is a visionary on that. He needs to get a lot more credit than he does for, one, the location of the airport and especially locating it north of Denver. A lot of people called Denver a cow town back then. That's not the case anymore. Was that a motivator for you? when all of this was, no, was coming I, I, to be? I think for me it was looking at the history of Denver because we've always been tied to transportation. Uh, the airport is our, is our port. We don't have the Atlantic Ocean or Pacific Ocean, so we have to use the airport as a way of uh, economic commerce regionally and internationally to get to other ports. And to me, the other aspect that was the most important was being able to have international carriers coming into Denver that were flying nonstop from Denver to those locations, whether it was London or whether it was Munich or wherever it might be. So as you look back at your career as Denver mayor, was that your greatest accomplishment, getting that off the ground? Well, I think that was one of the most significant accomplishments. Uh, that's kind of like asking the question, which one of your children do you love the best? <laughs> uh, that was know, a pretty big accomplishment. It was a big accomplishment. We built 95% of the airport. Um, you know, the first change order we made was 60, 60, a $65 million change order to put an automatic baggage system in because when I was elected mayor, we did not have a contract with United. Mm. And a condition for signing a contract was a new baggage system. And that baggage system proved to be... Uh, uh, a little more difficult than we anticipated. Well, we are going to talk more about the changes out at DIA um, when we come back. All right, everyone, here we go. The airport is open. Tell them DIA is open for business. Open for business. That was Denver Mayor Wellington Webb on February 28th, 1995, the day Denver International Airport finally opened up and here we are 25 years later we're joined again by mayor wellington webb he even brought props for us so well this is a picture of dia and i obviously love the tp tents and uh, i always said between the tp tents and if there was a buffalo herd right behind it if you couldn't close a business deal with this view <laughs> of denver it was just about impossible the second one is that united has always been a great partner with the city and they even uh need to be congratulated for the deal they just did with Mayor Hancock in ad adding additional gates at the airport because uh, they've always understood the... They've been there from day they've one. They've been there right. since day one. This is one of their hubs. But in order for placing emphasis on the I, international, mm -hmm. I always thought it was important to have some other international carriers in Denver as well as United. And so British Airways, we finally negotiated a contract. British Airways landed their first nonstop flights in 1998, and two years later, Lufthansa flying into Munich. And now there are many flights going into different uh, international cities around the world, which makes Denver International Airport a real international Truly airport. international. So you can fly anywhere in the world from Denver and go to any place in the world and come back to Denver. So 
the last point I'd make, uh, Ann, is that I was always struck by uh, uh, Herb Kelleher in Southwest, always told me when I first met with him, Southwest Airlines will never come to Denver because the fees are too high. <laughs> I remember that. And now you can't get Southwest out of here. I think they've taken over the whole <laughs> sea concourse in that. Uh, so, I, you know, it, it just goes to show, I think Denver's, you know, location, uh, the hub and operation is the airlines, the consolidation of airlines. And I think that uh, the location of the airport where we have the capacity to expand, most airports around the country can expand. What they do is they clean up the terminal, but they sure. don't expand. They don't expand the runway system. So for us, the ability to expand is, it makes it a great business opportunity for airlines like United and like Southwest and like many others. And, and we are also at a point here 25 years later where we're doing major renovations inside and we're hearing again about um, you know, contract well, disputes and so forth. What well, do you think about well, with... Well, there's an old saying, airports are never done. Hmm. And uh, if you find an airport and you go there and it's quiet, and there's no construction going on, there's no energy, it's a, uh, that airport's probably dying, you probably want to schedule your flight out of another airport. Hmm. Well, I guess that's one way to look at it. Um, all right, so let's talk about Under Your Watch. The Central Platte Valley was revitalized, you added more park space, um, you created Denver Health Authority. Are those the things, aside from an airport, that really put Denver on the map? Yeah, well, I love Denver, you know, I grew up here. Right. And uh, I grew up here because I was also asthmatic and had to move from the from Chicago to Denver in order to breathe. That, you know, I was given two al alternatives, Denver or Arizona, and I didn't have any relatives in Arizona, so Denver was the obvious place. So, um, but Denver's a different city now. Mm -hmm. uh, Denver's a different city. It's uh, population's increase. It's much younger. Right. Uh, when I endorsed John Denver's uh, song, um, what was it Rocky it? Mountain High, Rocky that Mountain one? Rocky Mountain High, yeah brought new meaning to Colorado. But, uh, I didn't know what I was endorsing at the time I did. It's, I didn't know it was that. But, uh, um, but I'm, I'm proud of the city. I just want to make sure that we maintain some of our Western heritage and character uh, along with our new West image. That, um, so how do we do that? Um, we have to fight for some things that people don't fight for, like parks and open spaces, mm -hmm. one. Uh, like a kindness initiative where people say thank you when they're served, uh, where elderly are having difficulty helping them across the street. Um, we don't want to get so big city that uh, we forget what made us special to begin with, hmm. which is some of the reasons that people moved here, uh, because it had all of the um, uh, amenities of a big city, but it also had a character that was primarily Western. So with um, less than a minute left, then what, what advice do you have uh, for, for future mayors of Denver? Let's just say it that way. Oh, oh I, I can't. I, you know, I feel like I'm the, f the past football coach. You know, you don't want to give the new coach any suggestions. Yeah, but so. you know this city a lot better than most folks. You've walked the entire city well, for I one. Did, and, you know, 42 days and nights I stayed in different people's homes, mm -hmm. Wilma and I. And uh, let me just put it this way. Any advice I have for any mayors, I would give it to them in private and then let them decide what they want to do. Ah, oh, you cheat. All right. <laughs> Mayor Webb, it's been such a delight. I didn't say they may accept the advice, but I just thought I'd do that in private. All right. Well, thank you. Right. Thank you so much. Always it's been a to pleasure you. to have right. you here. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's yeah. to you. And when we return, we're talking about the future of air travel right here in Denver with United. Welcome back. The future of aviation is about more than just planes. About a year and a half ago, the Colorado Air and Space Port was formed in Adams County. Within the next five to 10 years, people could travel to space from the spaceport and others around the country. And while that may sound like science fiction, if you think about how much of the world has changed in just the past decade, you realize it just might be the next logical step in aviation. Well, joining us now to talk about what that may actually look like going forward is Steve Jakewith, the Vice President of United's Denver Hub. United's Denver Hub. Right. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. So we heard Mayor Webb say United was the first, in fact, I was on the first United flight that landed at DIA. So you've had a presence there since the very beginning. We have actually, uh, we've actually served uh, Denver for over 80 years. And so we're a long standing. Uh, partner with the city of Denver. We were the first carrier to, to get into Denver to, to the point that you made. Um, 
It's just been awesome to see the development at DIA and the growth right. and what's transpired. And you just signed on for some new gates out we of did. DIA. We did. Yeah, we're going to add 24 more gates. It'll take us up to 90 total gates. Go from 500 flights a day in our current schedule to over 700 flights a day. Wow. And our new schedule. Uh, we service 170 nonstop destinations today. And so that number will go up significantly as we grow out those gates over the next several years. So growing out those gates, where, where does it stop? I mean, where, where does it go next? So uh, from a, a standpoint of growth, um, it's going to take probably a five-year period. Um, and we're expecting to grow about 50 flights a year over those five years hmm. to get us to the point where we have achieved a 700 to 750 flight a day operation. And that will uh, be mostly driven by domestic flights. It could be some uh, additional um, international flights uh, built into that as well. So when we talk about domestic and international flights, more and more people flying, what will, I mean, let's just talk very simply, what sure. will planes look like in the next five, 25 years? Yeah, so we've seen a lot of development uh, over the course of the, the last several years. Lots of carbon um, um, variances that provide efficiency and improvements. The 787 Dreamliner is a great example of that. It's a great aircraft. It's one that we actually fly out of Denver, going to London nonstop, as well as uh, Narita, Tokyo nonstop. Mm -hmm. um, beyond the uh, evolution of some of the carbon composites uh, that we're seeing in terms of aircraft, um, you know, certainly the future is bright. Uh, innovation and technology will, you know, continue its path and put us in a, in a different stratosphere at some I point. Mean, we hear a lot about electric cars these days. Sure. Will we see that with, with airplanes? I don't know that we'll ever see that with aircraft. Um, certainly, uh, we have some of the, the best and brightest pilots in our aviation. In fact, we just opened up a new Aviate um, school to help train huh. students to become pilots. And so I don't expect us to see uh, pilotless aircraft anytime in the near future. Um, but certainly other options with ground equipment and different types of applications, we'll see some developments. And so what, what do you see with, with DIA, for example? I mean, as Mayor Webb described, it's you know strategically located for massive growth if needed. How does that compare to, to a lot of other cities that United serves? So the mayor, um, Mayor Webb hit it right. Um, Denver does have a, a tremendous advantage in terms of geographic location. Uh, we ha have a, a great uh, proximity from east to west and connecting traffic to and from. Uh, also the whole catchment area, what we call a catchment area, the mountains and the regional uh, Rocky Mountain region provide a lot of opportunity for us to continue our growth and be able to feed in customers into Denver, allow us to fly nonstop and provide nonstop destinations out of Denver for our local community. And, and create enough synergy and enough traffic to be able to support that growth. So as, as a flyer, as a passenger, how will that experience change looking forward? Over the course of the next several years, I think, you know, as we uh, continue our partnership with Denver specifically and building out the Great Hall and putting us in a position where we can have a good collaborative effort at driving a customer seamless experience, um, that's really, really important. We've got to take the hassle out of travel. Uh, and so some of the work that we do col uh, collaboratively and collectively at uh, creating that right experience and allow the processing and the flow through the facility and providing great opportunities for customers to enjoy their experiences all add to the value. And so uh, just as an example. Please, uh, I don't know what you mean by seamless because yeah, so I think we all go out there and we go, oh, okay, well, I have to sit out here for yeah, Several so seam seamless wait. comes in terms of making sure that we keep our line weights to a minimum at the ticket counters and the lobbies and making sure the check-in experience is smooth. Uh, we will provide, I think, opportunities over the course of many years here of additional bag drops on your roadway in on Pena Boulevard mm -hmm. to be able to drop bags and reduce some of the traffic and some of the congestion. Um, the improvements that we do at the security checkpoints in easing some of the burden and, and some of the um, experience and enhancing that will really help. There's a lot of plans to improve um, some of the restaurants and some of the dining experiences and options. And then, you know, I'd say uh, Denver is really good about having a great partnership um, and looking at opportunities for customers to enjoy their time while they're at the airport 
Um, we've recently, you know, over the last several years, have had an ice rink uh, that right. provides capabilities for uh, diversions and be able to have something uh, fun for customers to do. And is that the trend at airports now? Is that is that what we're seeing? Airports are really thinking about how to make that experience just a absolutely less painless. You got to make it less painless. You you want to make sure customers enjoy their experiences as they're traveling through our airport and certainly on United Airlines. Well, um, I haven't tried the ice rink, but yeah. maybe one of these days, go. yes. Well, thank you so much, Steve Jacob with, with United. Appreciate uh, thank the you. look forward. Thank you for having me. You bet. Appreciate All right. it. You can always watch today's segments anytime at the denverchannel.com slash politics unplugged. Thank you for joining us and spending your party weekend with us. We'll see you back here next Sunday for another edition of Politics Unplugged.